So we're here at the radio shop. I've got Chris here and he's going to walk us through uh, some of the basics of our radio and how it works. Um, he's going to touch on some cleaning and maintenance and really just give us an overview on uh, the functions and and even how to get to a different channel. So if we're working with another agency outside of the Fort Worth Fire Department, how to get on their channel and uh, and really how to how to communicate effectively with everybody that we're working with. So I'm going to kick this over to Chris, and he's going to do a close up on uh, on the radio. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn the radio on. We're going to give it a couple seconds to boot up. You're good once you hear primary one. And then let's turn on the light. Okay. So when you start out, you should start out on your primary channel, number one. And your zone is listed up here. This is the zone that you're in. So you're in primary DA1 or DA. Uh, your channel is listed here, which is primary channel one. And then down here, you will have your alias for what the radio is, whether it's uh, engineer, firefighter right, firefighter left, uh, so you can identify where the radio is sp supposed to specifically go and be purposed for. If you want to change zones and go to your uh, secondary zone, what you'll do is this button right here, right underneath the zone, you'll press that. That'll bring you into your zone select, and you'll notice here that you start at uh, primary DA which is highlighted in blue and then you have a select button here which is associated with this button and an exit button here which is associated here in the menu so what you'll want to do is use your up and down keypad here and select either up or down which zone you want to be on and it will be highlighted for the zone that you're on so if you want to be on your secondary uh, talk groups for your backup, you'll select secondary DC, and then right here under select, you'll press this button. Secondary it'll, one. It'll beep two times, and then you'll get your voice announcement letting you know that you're on your secondary channel one. You'll see here your zone has changed again, so now it's showing the zone that you're in and your channel name. Changing channels is the same as it's always been. You got your button up, your knob up here, your long, tall, skinny one. And Two. each time you change Three. it, Four. you'll get your voice announcement. And then it'll change here on the screen showing you where you, uh, where, what channel you're on. You also have a display up here that you can look down on and see what the channel is that you're on in case you've got this in your in your uh, pouch and you can't see it. Now if you're in another zone and you need to get back to your home channel which is your primary channel you've got this button down here which has a little house on it. If you press and hold this for one second primary one it'll it'll beep once when you press it and it'll beep twice and it when it shifts back to your primary channel and you'll see here that your zone's been moved back to your primary and your channel is back on primary one. This is a quick return function and it's completely agnostic to what your control knob is up here. So if this is on channel eight and you press your home button, it's gonna take you back to this channel regardless of what you have set up here. And then this here, you can just turn back and put it on channel one after you get done with your communications. So, in order to get to other um, agencies for interop, what you'll want to do is you want to do the same as before. Press your zone button. Your zone selection comes up. You get your highlighted already on primary, which is where you're at now. If you want to go to um, Arlington, then you come up here and you can select the digital Arlington. Hit select. Arlington Fire. And that puts you into the Arlington um channels where you can interrupt with Arlington and you'll notice your zone up here changed as well. 
And then once you change your channel up here from your first channel, it'll take you into the Arlington channels. Your first channel on all your radios, no matter what zone you're in, is always going to be your primary channel. So you will have to go one channel click to get to that agency's talk groups. Now, if you want to go to one of the uh, fire interop channels that operate through most of the north central Texas region to interop with um, other agencies at a scene, same operation as before, click zone. Once you're in the zone mode, you'll notice again, you've got select and exit and a list of your zones. Just scroll up or scroll down until you reach the interop channels. And they're all listed right here. So here's fire interop. You put your highlight fire interop, then hit select. Fire interop. Now you're in the fire interop. You can select your call channels, your, your incident command one, your incident command two, and your interop one, uh, two, three, four, five, whichever one you're assigned that you need to be on at the time for that incident. At any time, like before, if you need to get back to your primary channel, just press and hold your home button, and you're back on your, your primary talk group. So now what we'll do is we'll showcase what happens when you go out of range uh, from a agencies that you want to talk to um, and what you can expect your radio to do. So let's take Denton, for example, since we're not in Denton. We'll go down here and select Denton Fire I.O. and then hit select. Okay, now you'll notice you get the obnoxious beep letting you know that tone, that beep, 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 that's letting you know you're out of range from the radio system. You will also get this red bar down here that says out of range, as well as up on top, it will say out of range and your display will turn red. All this means is you're not within range of that system. So all you have to do is press your home button, get back on your home channel, and then figure out whether you're supposed to be uh, within range or not. You just may not be in the area yet. Okay, so what we're going to do for you now is we're going to demonstrate what to expect when you hit your emergency button. For the purposes of testing, we're going to use uh, the primary channel 8 so that we don't have any disruption to the services going in, in process right now. So up here at the top, you'll have your orange button. This is your emergency button. You'll have to press this and hold this for about one second for it to go into emergency mode. So let's do that. Okay, now we're in emergency mode. You'll notice here it says emergency. The top will also display emergency. And the radio beeped a couple times when you first put it in to let you know that it's, that it's there. Now dispatch um, has on their display showing that you're in emergency. Also, if you have this speaker microphone, the flashlight will blink SOS so that you can be found if you're in an emergent situation. To clear your emergency, you can press and hold the button And once you hear that long, solid beep, the emergency is now cleared from your radio. You'll also notice that your microphone flashlight stopped its Morse code of SOS. And that's what to expect when you press your emergency button. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some of the buttons on both the radio and this style of microphone if you have it. First thing we'll look at is you'll notice you have 
four buttons on the side of your radio. These all have separate functions. Of course, we all know what the big button is. That's your push to talk. This here is, at the top, is a purple button. This will turn on the light for your radio. So if I press this button, you notice the light goes off, light comes on. That's all this button does right here is turn your light on. This next button down here is your volume set tone. So you press and hold this and you'll get a loud tone and it'll allow you to change your volume to set your, your volume as to what's comfortable for you. So what we'll do is we'll press it. And then you can, that will allow you to set your tone for your mic, your speaker mic, that's comfortable. Okay, so the last button down here is your keypad lock button. What that's going to do is that's going to lock all of these controls right here so you don't accidentally change channels, change zones, or bump something, or move back to your home channel. So what you do is on this, just press it. It'll beep once and then it'll come up and show keypad lock. Anything you hit, you'll notice it comes up and it says keypad lock, doesn't do nothing. To unlock it, you just hit this button again and it will unlock and it'll beep. Unfortunately, it does not let you know that you have unlocked it. Your only indication is a beep. Now, if you change, you'll notice you've got your buttons are working again. Okay. Okay. So now we'll talk about the, the controls on the top of your radio. You'll notice you have this ABC switch here and you have this switch here that has a zero and then a zero with a line through it. This switch has a little indicator and it just moves back and forth. Okay. What this does is this turns on the scan for your radio. So with the in the position of the zero with the line through it, your scan is turned off. If you move this over to just the zero, scan. you'll get your voice response saying you're scanned. You'll get your beep acknowledging the, the movement of the switch. And then you'll notice right here, you've got a little Z that appears on the screen. That's letting you know you're in scan mode. Turn it off. You just put the switch back to zero with the line through it, and that'll turn your scan off. Now your ABC switch up here, what this does is aggravate you. It does absolutely nothing. So if you move this into the A set, into the B or to the C, it has no effect on your radio. Let's look at your microphone. On this style of microphone, you have a control here, push to talk, and a single button here. We'll go over those first. This here is an up and down switch, toggle switch. This controls the volume for your speaker. Long button, push to talk. This little button right down here is not programmed for anything if you press it. All it does is just beep saying, hey, I'm, I don't do anything. The next thing is your flashlight right here. You'll notice if you feel it, it's, it's rubberized so that your finger doesn't slip off of it. If you press and hold it, you'll notice now your flashlight has been turned on. Press and hold it again. It turns it off. Now up here on the top, you have your emergency button, which operates the exact same way that this one does. And you have your channel select. Now the thing to know about your channel select up here is if you change the channel up here, two, three, it changes the display as well, okay? It's completely agnostic to this control here. Doesn't matter what this is set on. If you change it here, it's going to change the channel on the radio for you. Two. One. So now what we'll do is we'll talk about your battery. Battery life, how to check the battery life, when you should charge it, so on. 
Now, like before, you'll notice here you have a menu. You got zone, clock, and mute. These actually change if you press your D-pad right here to the right. Now you'll notice you have a second menu of three, battery, scan list, and nuisance. If you hit the button right underneath battery, it'll take you into your battery info mode. Mm -hmm. We'll bring this closer. So this radio right now, it shows a charge of 50%, the remaining capacity, and the estimated amount of charges that the batteries had so far. The remaining capacity is an arbitrary number. It's not anything to look at. Um, it's Motorola's mathematical equation for producing 50%, 60%, 80%. So this is a quick way you can look and see whether your battery needs to be charged or not. You can exit quickly by hitting the exit button and this will take you back to your main screen and back to your menu. If you want to go back to the very first menu, you press the right arrow and it'll take you back. The thing to note about the battery is that these are smart batteries. They're what they're called an Impress or an Impress 2 battery. We'll take this off and we'll look at it real quick. So this particular battery is a standard Impress smart battery. It's got a green label, which means it's a, a lithium ion. It's not, it's not a NICAD. Um, the thing with these is these terminals that are right here, two of these are telemetry. So when you put this in a charger, the charger will automatically look at this battery. It will get all the information off the battery and the battery will tell the charger if it needs to be reconditioned, if it just needs to be charged, or if it doesn't need to be charged at all. Now, when you place this into the charger, you'll have your LED on the front of the charger. It'll either go yellow, it'll go green, it'll go red, or it'll go red-green. If it goes yellow, that is the battery telling the charger that it needs to be reconditioned. What that will do is that will then drain the battery down as to absolute zero and then charge the battery back up. It'll then drain the battery again to absolute zero and then charge it back up, hoping to achieve more charge than what it did the first time. This process can take anywhere between one hour and eight hours, depending on the condition of the battery. It does this to extend the life and the operating use of your battery. Now, the battery automatically does it regardless every 30 days. So if you have this battery and it doesn't sit on the charger for 25 days, chances are when you put it in, it's not gonna recondition unless it absolutely thinks it has to. But when it clocks 30 days, it will automatically recondition. Now, as far as the other modes, Green mode means that it's done charging. A flashing green means that it's at 90% capacity and it is almost done charging. If you get flashing green and flashing red, that means that the battery is malfunctioned and it needs to be replaced. You can replace the batteries by either going to fire alarm and getting a new battery, or you can come here to the radio shop and we will replace your battery. Okay. So now let's talk about your chargers inside of the trucks. Your chargers inside the truck only charge your battery. You'll notice that those chargers have a dual lead. It'll be yellow or it'll be red. Yellow is just letting you know it needs to be conditioned. It doesn't actually do the conditioning. You will have to take the battery out and place it into the cradle in the charger in the house. If it's red, it's just charging. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the cleaning and care of your radio to keep it in top operational condition. First thing you're gonna need is some simple green, glass cleaner, uh, some sort of mild detergent that comes in a squirtable bottle. Simple green works the best. Next you're gonna need is an old toothbrush 
or a short uh, bristle brush to get into all your cracks and crevices on the radio to get all the dust and grime out. A simple pencil with an eraser and some napkins. So let's start with the battery contacts and your accessory contacts. First thing you'll want to do is remove your accessory. This will expose the copper contacts on the side of the radio. This is what allows your speaker microphone to operate without issue. To clean this, all you need is a simple eraser. Just put this on here, scrub it real good, and it will take off all of the carbon, all of the dirt, all of the dust, and you're good to go. Same thing for your battery contacts. This is where your battery charges at. And to make sure that you get a long, good charge and uh, your contacts are clean, you can do the same thing. Just go take your eraser over them. This will also clean any carbon, dirt, dust, smoke, grime off the contacts and allow it to make a good connection with your charger. Now let's go over top of your radio. A lot of times you'll get dust and dirt and just any kind of particulates in here that will keep you from seeing your screen, the, the button from being visible, uh, and operation. To clean this, what you want to do is you want to take your toothbrush or your short bristled brush and just put a little bit of simple green or cleaner on it. And then just start working over your top controls. Your radio is watertight. This will not get in the radio. It will not hurt it. Get in there and scrub real hard. You'll notice, if you can see on the screen, that simple green has gotten brown. It's gotten dirty. So it's taken some, some dirt and some dust off that. Scrub your controls. And then, at the same time, you can come down here to the face of the radio and scrub that as well. Clean any dirt and, dirt and dust out of that. You can also do your controls here. We'll get a little bit more simple green. Do this with the radio off as well. Clean that real good. You can just go clean your the hole for your little microphone right there. And then once you're done, just take your paper towel and wipe your radio down. Now you'll notice that all the dirt, grime, and smoke that were around or in the controls has now been cleaned off. And it looks brand new. Now your emergency button is more visible, which is key. Because that muscle memory tells you where it's at, but you still want to be able to see it if you need to. So now let's go over to your accessory, your speaker microphone. This one is pretty dirty. You can see that you can barely see any of the orange. Um, this too is also uh, watertight. So cleaning it, and depending on how dirty it is, it may need a little bit more cleaning. But we'll go over it real quick. It's the same process. Just squirt some cleaner on your toothbrush. And then get in there and start cleaning it really good. Like so. Now remember that especially this flashlight, if you use it, it's clear. So if it gets dirty, if you clean it, it will get brighter. Once that's done, just take your paper towel Wipe it down. Get in there real good. Get it all cleaned out. 
Now you'll notice that the front is a little bit more cleaner um, compared to down here where I didn't clean. You can see it's a lot cleaner. Now your emergency button, you can see that thing. You can also see the indicators a lot better. And you can also see the numbers on your control a lot better. All right, well, that's it. That's uh, probably one of the best lessons I've had, at least on the radio in a long time. And uh, thank you, Chris, for taking time out of your day to, uh, to walk us through that. Um, real quick on, the, uh, on how often we need to, to clean this radio, what would your recommendation be? My recommendation would be to clean it any time that you notice buildup. Uh, if you've been in a situation where you're in a lot of plaster or just a very dirty environment, at the least, I would clean the contacts on both the battery and your accessory connector um, after, after each incident where you're just gotten really dirty. Other than that, you can once a month maybe go over the radio. You do that, it keeps it in a relatively clean condition and you don't have to scrub real hard on it. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks again. Um, if you get a chance, grab your radio off the truck, uh, go through some of the steps that Chris showed us, how to change channels, uh, move to a different interrupt channel, uh, and just get just get used to doing that uh, so that next time when you have to do it, it won't be the first time you've done it. Again, thanks. We'll yeah. see you guys on the next one. Be safe out there. Bye.